Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and of course more Sunbreak with Sunbreak's update number 5. With this we have some new monsters to introduce, some new very important decorations and today a new important skill. With the addition of Risen Shagaru and their armor set Virtue, we have access to the new skill Frenzied Bloodlust, which as you can see temporarily gives you an additional wire bug when overcoming the frenzy. This does in fact mean that you can have up to four wire bugs now in Rise. Of course, depending on the level, depends on how long that buff lasts, how long you have the extra wire bug. Up to 90 seconds at level three or 30 seconds per level interval. To actually get this extra wire bug though, you must beat frenzy, which will require some things. If you're not fighting, say, Gore or Shagaru or otherwise, you're gonna need to be running Bloodlust to actually have the potential of having frenzy building up and have something to beat. With that beaten now, we have this 90 seconds at level three of three wire bugs and as you can see when i don't have my weapons unsheathed as soon as they're on my back that 90 seconds evaporates that was something like three or four seconds it was incredibly short how quickly we lost that the moment we sheathed and while we have this buff here shown as this sort of blue bubble, I have beaten the Frenzy. So I have the extra affinity. The whole time that I have this buff, I cannot beat Frenzy again and therefore get another wire bug. So there's sort of an inherent cooldown on this ability. But of course, it is not the only way to get three wire bugs. You could find a wire bug in the map open world. I have, say, a Palico drop you one during combat. If I pick this up, I have a period where I have that third wire bug. We can benefit from that extra wire bug normally. Combine that with the effect of Frenzy Bloodlust, though and we can reach up to four as I'll show you right now. Once I deal enough damage to breed the frenzy like so, we now have four wire bugs ready to go and I will have that for a good period of time as long as I do not unsheath as I've just shown you, we can actually keep this buff. So it's very important that you don't actually leave combat or sheath randomly so this won't be great on weapons that do a lot of sheathing potentially. In the case of dual blades with a normal setup, this means I can kind of spam my counter for example, always having it ready and always having it available or I could be doing one of my main DPS options in spiral slash pretty consistently managing the DPS as best I can. The question is how do we make this a smooth as possible, something you can actually run in a real set, and what's the best way and options that we have. Well, firstly, the Virtue set itself has a lot of what you actually need. To find the new skill, Frenzy Bloodlust, you'll need to pick up the gloves, the waist, and the boots. The gloves are particularly good with one level of Bloodlust and attack boost on them, where the waist is also great because it has two levels of weakness exploit. So particularly good slots, and also pretty good decoration slots, particularly on the waist. Bloodlust is kind of required for this concept though, because otherwise you'll only be beating Frenzy when you're actively fighting God or other versions of that fight. Bloodlust is, as you can see, what causes the Frenzy virus when in combat, even when fighting other monsters. This is a unique version of Frenzy though, providing you with attack, evasion, and stamina benefits when affected while you're still trying to beat the Frenzy. Then when you beat Frenzy, it turns into affinity and you overcome it. But with Bloodlust, there is a consistent health drain occurring, only managed when you overcome the Frenzy and get your red vitality back. Bloodlust maxes at level three. And the thing is, if you are going for full Frenzy Bloodlust, you will need these three pieces and so you will have three out of three bloodlust which is really nice synergy there however with this new update there is in fact a new jewel bloodlust jewel four so for a four slot decoration you can get one level of bloodlust something you might want to consider if you're only getting say two levels of frenzy bloodlust and need that third level of regular bloodlust naturally there are other skills in game that will help with this effect the number one obvious synergy i would say is going to be wirebug whisperer here which at level one will extend the duration you can keep one of those extra wire bugs you pick up by 30%. And then at level three, it'll increase the passive recovery rate while you're on the ground. This will help us maximize the time that we can potentially have four wire bugs with this skill. So at very least, level one of wire bug whisperer is a very good idea if you're gonna use frenzy bloodlust. As you can see, there is a four slot decoration to get two levels of it or one level of it to for just one two slot, which is probably a great idea. But further than that, there's a new rampage decoration, which after defeating the kind of final boss of update five, you will unlock wire bug Wrangler. This rampage decoration simply extends the duration you can keep a wire bug by 30 seconds flat out, which is honestly pretty impressive. And the fact that this is a one slot is also awesome. Just by having this rampage decoration wire bug Wrangler slotted in, it means with level three frenzy bloodlust, we get to enjoy 120 seconds of an extra wire bug whenever we beat that frenzy. So we have three wire bugs here for two full minutes, which is insane. And then of course you can pick up the other wire bugs if a palico drops it or just they're on the map. And that means pretty consistently combined with wire bug whisperer, you're going to have four wire bugs to work with throughout the hunt, which is going to be 
incredible. Now, honestly, with the case of dual blades, this doesn't really excite me like too much. It's definitely nice to be able to counter whenever I want. And then of course, spiral slash as many times as possible. But you can't always do this. Where I see this being a bit more useful is weapons that have expensive, powerful Siltbind attacks that you really need something like Wirebug Whisperer to work with. Take the Switch X, for example, and its counter. That is a consistent counter that you can have pretty much every time you need it if you have three Wirebugs. But if you only have two, it's a lot harder. So even just Frenzy Bloodlust for say 60 seconds at level two, that could be pretty damn awesome for a weapon like that. And I'm more than certain there are many cases of Siltbind attacks that do take two wire bugs and are on longer cooldowns that would benefit from this. So I guess the question is, is Frenzied Bloodlust really worth it? Of course, there are Bloodlust builds, and if you synergize that with Dereliction, which is a common meta thing to do, you can get a lot of damage with that. Having an extra wire bug just by default if you're running, say, two or three of those pieces, there is actually a lot of potential there. It's just a question of what is the min-max benefit of this skill, like I'm suggesting maybe just two levels of it with three out of three regular Bloodlust, and what's potentially a bit overkill if, say, you're running the new Rampage Decoration Wirebug Wrangler. You may be giving up a potential potent rampage decoration that you could otherwise slot in because you know there's a few new ones in this patch. Take Demon Rage Dual 2 from me in the case of Dual Blades. When hitting monsters in demon mode, stamina consumption caused by demon mode will be nullified for a short while. That sounds absolutely incredible and could be meta changing. To have to give that up to have 30 seconds extra on my wire bugs, it's a hard choice undeniably. Perhaps it would be best to run just two pieces of the Virtue set, like the Gloves and Waste, for just the two levels of Frenzied Bloodlust. And here, you know, you'll have 60 seconds of an extra wire bug every time you beat the Frenzy. Of course, if you are using Frenzy and beating Frenzy, you want to have as much of the regular Bloodlust as you can get. If you're even going to do this at all, we might as well benefit from beating the Frenzy as much as possible if you're going to do it. So we could consider another piece to get that final level of regular Bloodlust, or say, slot that new Bloodlust decoration that does exist. From here, one level of Wirebug Whisperer should be easy to secure with either, say, the two-slot decoration, a curious craft on your armor, or a talisman skill even then. There's certainly options in the game to get it, and it's not like a rare skill. It'll take some further testing and looking into builds before we can say for sure if this is worth all the commitment, or maybe going harder is best with certain weapons. But there you go, Frenzied Bloodlust and the overview of how it works, and what I think you need to know, and other suggestions around it. What do you guys think? Is this potentially something you would run in a set? Which weapons are going to most benefit from having three or even four wire bugs consistently? And when does this really become a bit overkill? For now though, I've been Holo, you've been you, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and until next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye